Tandem Nomads, episode 201. You want to grow your business? You want to make more revenue? You want to attract more clients? How can you achieve all those goals? By being intentional about them. And this is how you do so. Hello, Nomad Nation. Welcome to Tandem Nomads, the podcast show and entrepreneurship platform where you can find a great inspiration and tips to grow a successful portable business and thrive in your global nomadic life. This is your host, Ahmed Deregi. I'm a business and marketing coach and the founder of Tandem Nomads. This episode is aired at the beginning of January 2021, but I will surely make sure that it is relevant no matter when you listen to it. I am going to talk to you today about how to reflect and plan your goals in order to grow your business. Nomad Nation, have you actually taken the time to sit down at the end of the previous year or right at the beginning of this year, to actually reflect on your goals and how you will achieve them. If not, it is highly time that you do so. If you are really committed to your business and really considered as a real business and not just a hobby, you cannot continue any further without sitting down planning one to two hours and reflecting on what has happened in the past year and where you want to go this year. But know that no matter which time of the year you are listening to this, it is never too late to get started if you have not done it yet. Also, evaluating your business and your goals is not something to do just once a year. It is actually something that I recommend you to do throughout the year. Planning throughout the year by making it a ritual every single month and every single quarter to evaluate where you are and where you want to go. In fact, the best way to actually reach your goals is to also evaluate what's happening so that you can adjust them and be intentional about them and also realistic about what can you achieve so that you make sure that you don't end the year feeling like you have been so passive and not in control of things. The only way to control your goals is to actually measure them, track them, evaluate them and Adjust them when necessary as you move forward. And in highly volatile times like ours these days, as we have seen in the past year 2020 with the pandemic and the lockdowns, it is so important to be agile in your business and be able to respond and pivot quickly. And this is why you also want to be very intentional about the way you are growing your business and really checking out on a regular basis what you can do to adapt it to the circumstances, being things like a pandemic or smaller things that might happen in your own life, for example. Maybe something is happening in your personal life that requires from you to make some adjustments so that you can continue to reach your goals or even if you have to reevaluate your goals that you can still continue to be intentional and not drop the ball once for all and consequently feel so discouraged that it's even harder to pick up where you left it off. This is what will make the difference between a successful entrepreneur and a struggling entrepreneur. But also, there's something that I have been realizing in the past couple of years as I've been growing my business, something that really surprised me and, and I didn't even realize that could be a thing. This lack of acknowledgement that we have as we grow our businesses Pausing to be reflective and intentional about your business is also a mindful way to thank yourself and be grateful for the amazing achievements you have made. We tend to always jump from one thing to another and not leave the time to actually acknowledge the great improvements that you have made along the way. Even the smallest ones need to be acknowledged. Otherwise, what is the point if it's to always focus on what's not working? So you also want to make the time to acknowledge all the great progress you have made and celebrate it. 
So no matter when you're listening to this episode, I hope that you take the time to really sit down and look through it. So in order to help you, this episode is all about showing you how to do that, how to evaluate your goals and what you need to do in order to take your business to where you want it to be. For that, I am actually going to share with you a whole worksheet. Listen carefully, Nomad Nation. This is a mine gold of information that I prepared for you. It is a whole worksheet that will help you really work through your goals step by step and show you how I do it and how I help my clients do it. I st- spent a few hours on this one, so make sure to not miss it. Go to tandemnomads.com slash 201 and download the worksheet that I will help you through out this episode with. So what I recommend you to do is to listen to this episode once all over from A to Z and then listen to it once more as you go through the worksheet. But before we get started and go through this worksheet together in this episode, I have a challenge for you. What I want you to do is to pause this episode and go to your calendar and schedule a date during the month where you're listening to this episode. Block at least one hour or two, if you can, to work on your goals. Then go to tandemnomads.com slash 201 and download your worksheet. All right, I'm going to give you now a few seconds to go through these two tasks and come back to me as soon as you're done. All right. Well, I hope that it's done and that you are excited to get started with this topic today. And I really hope to hear from you after this to see how it all went for you. One more great goodie that I have for you. Know that once you finish to go through the worksheet, you will have the opportunity to get a free assessment session with me. So make sure to read all the way at the end of this worksheet how you can apply for it. All right, so now I'm going to give you some more information on how to proceed when you take this time to assess your business and to evaluate where you are and where you want to be. Well, guess what? The first part before even you start thinking about what you should plan as your goals for this year, the next month, the next quarter. One thing that a lot of people skip that I highly recommend you to really consider as important as the rest is to reflect on the past rather than jumping real quick on the next thing. So the first part of you evaluating your business and your goals is to think about your biggest achievements of the past year. In the achievements, I really want you to look at the quantitative elements. And when I say quantitative, I'm not just talking about revenue. I'm talking about all the things that you can measure. For example, the number of people who sign up to your newsletter. This is probably one of the biggest key metrics of a portable business. So look at, for example, how many people you had before you started the year and how many people you have now. So this is something big to celebrate, sometimes even more important than revenue itself, because that is what will lead you to grow your revenue. Other things that are quantitative that you can measure is the number of clients you got, the number of people you help, the number of partners, the number of people in your network. So look at all the numbers that you can measure in your business and your progress. And then I want you to really, really be very intentional about celebrating the qualitative aspects of your business, especially if you are in the early journeys. I want you to have a picture of what was existing before you started this year, this month or this quarter versus what is existing in your business now. For example, maybe you did not have a newsletter set up. Maybe your website was not finished. Maybe you did not even have yet a business and you just set it up or other things such as your personal and and professional growth your your personal development is as important of an achievement in entrepreneurship trust me the journey to growing a business 
is a amazing spiritual experience. And that one is also to be acknowledged. So look at all the new things you've learned, all the new skills you acquired, all the new lessons you've learned along the journey. So make sure to sit down and reflect with them thoroughly. Don't skip this one. Take the necessary time to reflect on it. And by the way, before I forget, this system here that I'm sharing with you, if you're struggling to do it on your own, feel free to have a time blocked with a friend or a business peer to help you go through it if you're struggling to really reflect on all of these things on your own. So don't hesitate to do that. As well as if you already have a team, include your team in this process. Have your team join this uh, one or two hours that you have together to reflect on the great things that have worked in the business and the things that you want to improve to be able to set up your goals. So in this part, you want to celebrate the achievements, as I said, but you also want to then look at what did not work and be very factual about it. Make sure to not let your emotions guide this process. It is so important that you look your challenges as opportunities for you to continue to grow. So be very honest with yourself without being emotional. Look at what has stopped you from being where you want to be. And once you've done that, think about if you were warned in advance that that was going to happen, what would have you done differently? And even if you were not warned, what can you do to move forward and minimize the effects of those challenges? In that aspect, there might be a lot of things you can do. So think about it in terms of, you know, mindset, in terms of business strategy, in terms of energy. There's a lot of things that you might need to work on. And I hope that all the past episodes and future episodes will also help you with that. But really try to reflect thoroughly about what can be done if you could anticipate all those challenges in advance. But most importantly, how did you grow from these challenges? What did you learn from them so that you can also benefit from the challenges you've experienced? All right, so once you've taken the time to really reflect on these aspects, I also want you, if you already are making revenue in your business, to reflect on your revenue. It is really, really important that you are tracking your money I've seen a lot of entrepreneurs in the early journeys who are not doing that. So this is really, really important. There's various tools in different countries to use as an accounting tool, for example, to track your numbers. But on top of the automated versions, I want you every single month to sit down and look at the incoming and outcoming money in your business. This is very, very important. And even if you are not making revenue yet, I want you to consider all the money you're spending in your education, in your support, in your certifications, in your marketing tools. Make sure to keep track of them so that you can see how those expenses are are evolving in your business. So, Make sure to also, when you look at your revenues, think about in terms of a percentage. For example, if you have different types of product or services, I want you to calculate the percentage of each type of revenue stream in your overall um, revenue of the year. This is really important to know where is most of the money coming and what's working, what's not working among all the services or products you might have. This is as well very important and you will see this will be super, super strategic for you to evaluate so that you can then know where you want to continue to put your efforts in next year or next month versus what you want to maybe uh, lower or reduce or remove so that you can have more energy to focus on what works. All right, so take the time to do that, this first part, reflecting on what has happened in the past so that you can move forward in the future with a great knowledge of all the important assets you need to be aware of in your business. Now let's go to the second part. That is the part where you start planning the next year, the next quarter, the next month. 
So here you will have a series of questions in your workbook to help you through it. But again, here is about trying to anticipate all the things that could happen. But first, before you do that, I want you to dream big. I want you to not let anything stop you from really allowing yourself to imagine what could be the most amazing thing that could happen to you that business. And here is one side note. And I know it might sound a little hoo-hoo or I don't know how to say it, but I can guarantee you that when you verbalize your biggest dreams and share them with others, write them down, visualize them, there is something that happens that even if you don't reach that big goal, you certainly will get closer to it than if you do not visualize it, share it, write it down, but make sure as well to authorize yourself to dream big. This is something that I highly, highly, highly recommend you. And here's the thing. I've seen a lot of people saying, no, I don't want to have such a big goal because what if I get disappointed? Well, Nomad Nation, that is not a mindset that will get you anywhere. I want you to convince yourself and repeat it to yourself. It is much, much more effective to dream big and get closer to that goal, then limit yourself with your goals. As the expression says, when you shoot for the moon, you will land with the stars. So make sure, Nomad Nation, to not limit yourself. Allow yourself to dream big and worry afterwards how to get there. But at least let your spirit, your mind, your heart speak for you. Let your dreams come out and express them out loud. The whole practicalities of it will come later. All right? Promise me. Promise me, Nomad Nation, that you will not limit yourself with this question. Then comes the next step. The step that you can measure, that you can be very pragmatic about, which are the actual goals you want to achieve in order to get to that big dream. So in the types of goals you want to define, you have the monetary, but also the quantitative goals, for example, the number of people who subscribe to your newsletter. And again, if you want to grow a successful portable business, you need to have that goal in your worksheet. You need to define how many people you want to attract in your newsletter, how many people you want to build your mailing list with, because that is the number one goal that every portable business should focus on. Everything else will depend on just on that. On top of it, you have you can have other goals, for example, the number of speaking engagements where you want to be speaking, the number of clients, the number of features in the media, things like that. So take the time to measure those elements so that it helps you evaluate throughout the year how you're doing to get there. This is really, really important. So on top of your revenue goals, take the time to evaluate what will take you to those revenue goals and what can you measure to get there. I am going to give you a a great example of my times when I used to sell books door to door. I've mentioned this for all of you who are listening to this podcast show on a regular basis. You might know that in my early, early, early times as a young adult, one of my first jobs was to be a saleswoman selling encyclopedias door to door. And one of my biggest lessons was to realize that if I wanted to achieve my sales goals, focusing on the money was not going to help. What I needed to focus on was the number of doors I knocked at. The only thing I could control is the number of doors that I knocked at. The money was just a consequence of that. So the more doors are knocked at, the more doors managed to open, the more chances, statistically, I will convert them into sales and reach my goals. So it's the same in your business. You want to have monetary financial revenue goals, but you also want to have other quantitative goals that you can focus on. And the number of people who subscribe to your newsletter is those number of doors that you knock at in your portable business. So make sure to be intentional about that part as well. However, I also want you to have other goals in your business that are not necessarily monetary, but more strategic. For example, you might want to rebrand your business. You might want to work on your copywriting. You might want to get some new skills for you to take your 
your business to the next level. So all of these things can also be integrated in your goals to get to where you want to be. And the questions in the worksheet will lead you through that. Once you do that in that second part about setting up your goals, you also want to dedicate some time to reflect on anticipating what could come along the way that could stop you from reaching those goals. Be intentional about that as well. Imagine what could happen along the way and what will you do to avoid it from stopping you. Think about all the resources you will need to make sure to keep you accountable and also to have the skills and resources or anything that you might need to help you stay focused on your goals and reach them. And this is where as well, you take advantage of the first part of this worksheet, which was reflecting on the past. So go back to what you've learned from the past and make sure that this does not repeat when you plan your goals for this year or coming month or quarter. All right. So make sure to implement those learning lessons at this time of this phase of the goal setting. All right, so once you have evaluated the past and then set up your goals for the next year or quarter or month, it is time to start planning the implementation of your goals. It's all about baby steps. This is when you can start looking at how you can implement and turn those big dreams of yours into reality is by breaking them down into small baby steps. So you're going to take your calendar and start looking each month what are those little steps that will lead you to those big goals. For example, if you decided to focus as a big goal to get a thousand new subscribers in your email list this year, then you want to break it down into certain numbers per month and per quarter. So it doesn't always have to be equally divided. You want to think about your strategy, how you're going to implement that to make it happen. For example, you can say at the beginning, I will reach, you know, 10% the first quarter, then 20% the second, etc. So reflect like consciously about your strategy and how does that reflect into implementation of your plan. Again, I'm going to give you a very pragmatic example with the door-to-door sales. So for me to reach my goals, I knew that I needed to make three sales per day. And in order to make three sales per day, I needed to have at least 30 doors that open when I knock. And knowing that not every door that I knocked at opened, I need I knew that I needed to knock at least at 90 doors per day for me to be able to reach that goal, which based on the number of hours I worked per day meant about nine to 10 doors per hour. So all I focused was, all my focus was every single hour to focus on those 10 doors. That's it. So it's the same concept for you throughout the year. Every single month, I want you to set up very factual goals of what you need to focus on so that you can reach that big goal and drop that big goal into small, tangible little things you can achieve so that it doesn't feel overwhelming. It is indeed much easier to say, I only need to knock at 10 doors this next hour than knock at 90 doors this whole day right? So it's the same psychology that I want you to adapt in the case of a portable business. In the worksheet, I will guide you through it and I will let you know exactly what kind of goals you need to set up and also what are the key dates to think about along the year that you should really build your business around. For example, if you decided to launch a new product, put the date first, Put that date first in your calendar and then work backwards to see all the things that are necessary to get to a successful launch. Also, in the personal aspect as well, you want to make sure to think about all the vacation, the kids' holidays or other things that might happen in your personal life that you need to spend time on and focus some space for in your calendar. So start as well there so that you know when are the times in the year where you need to slow it down a little bit, but still then focus on how you can build the rest of the year to reach your goals. This is how, Nomad Nation, you get intentional about your business. 
This is really, really important that you take the time to really then look at that calendar and build your business around it. Now, depending on when you're listening to this episode and implementing this worksheet, if you are at the beginning of the year, like January 2021, then what I want you to do is to take the first quarter and be very detailed for each month of the first quarter. So be very detailed for the month of January, February and March, what you're going to do. But then you don't need necessary to break down every month for the next quarters. You can build your goals for the quarter two, three, four. And once you finish quarter one, sit down and do the same exercise to be more detailed about each month of quarter two, for example. So if you're catching up this episode and this worksheet in the middle of the year, do the same, be detailed about what's coming up next immediately. And then if you're struggling to be detailed about the following quarter, then at least visualize it and plan it and once you get closer you can then look into details with the dates how you can do it so this is just in case you find it difficult to plan the whole year in terms of dates at least think about it in terms of quarters in fact so many unpredictable things nowadays right so especially if you're an expat or global nomad we don't always know what's going to happen what's going to be the next move but This will help you to still be intentional. Once you get that information, you can then go back to the drawing board and adapt those days, which leads me to the most important part of achieving your goals. Once you have done all this work of reflecting on the past, the goals, and then implementing them in your calendar, you then want to create a ritual in your life, in your daily life, weekly management of your calendar, a ritual goal to evaluate how you're going into your business. And if you see that you're struggling to reach that goal, guess what? You are authorized to adjust it. It's all about mindset as well, right? I don't want you to give up on your goals and I don't want you to sell yourself too short. I don't want you to give up on your big dreams. But the best way to not feel discouraged along the way is to continuously evaluate the goals. If you see that you're getting close very fast, allow yourself to increase that goal. If you see that it's getting really difficult to reach it, then look at it and revise the numbers and define a new goal that you know you will reach. It is very important that you are intentional about that part as well. So every single month, as I said, evaluate your goals, but I also encourage you to look at it on a weekly basis. What are you doing every day to reach those goals? I have a resource to recommend you that I swear all by and I only work by is the focus planner. So I use a planner where I decide every single day what are my top three goals to achieve. And then every single week, month and quarter, there's some guidance there on how to reflect on it. So check out on the show notes of this episode and the resources section. I will give you the link of that planner that I use as well. And it's called Full Focus Planner from Michael Hyatt. You'll find it on tandemnomads.com slash 201. All right, so the first part was reflecting on the past. The second was reflecting on your goals for the future. And the third part is about implementing how can you make it become reality by being very, very intentional about your calendar, your dates, and what are you going to do to make it happen. Now, the last part of this time that you will spend on planning your goals is to reflect on this process that you've been through. It's almost like a bit of self-coaching. So you will see some questions to help you through it. But basically, the goal here is once you've been working through all of that, I hope that you really don't give up if you're getting stuck somewhere, because here is the time where you start figuring out what you can do when you're stuck. In fact, throughout this process, there might be some times where you're not too sure what you should do. Or for example, if your goal is to get X number of uh, clients with a certain number of revenue, but you're not sure how you will get there, well, just put it there, write it down that you struggle to know how to do it. So that in this fourth part, you can start reflecting on what you can do about the fact that you're struggling to find their answer. So I have some questions for you, but the key here is to understand where you're stuck and where you can find the resources, the support you need. 
In the episode 199, I have really insisted on the importance of growing your tribe, growing your army around your business, or in other terms, your board of directors. If you want to achieve your goals, you won't be able to do it alone, Nomad Nation. Even if you're a solopreneur, you need to understand that it is so, so, so important to build that community of peers, of supporters, of experts who will help you reach these goals. So take the time to reflect what do you need to make sure to keep you accountable and provide you with the knowledge, expertise, information you need to be able to reach those goals. And this is why in this workbook, I did offer you the opportunity to sign up for a free assessment session with me. So make sure to check in all the details of how you can apply in the workbook of this episode that you can find on tandemnomads.com slash 201. However, know that I will only have a very limited number of people that I can take for this free assessment sessions. And depending on when you're listening to this episode, if it's a few months down the road, I might not be able to do it anymore. So if you're listening to this episode in the early year 2021, make sure to take action as quickly as possible. And all the conditions to be able to apply to this free assessment session is in the worksheet of this episode. All right. Here's the last part that's really important. Is your commitment, your commitment to make this a priority that you take the time to reflect on your goals? I said at the beginning of this episode, and I just want to repeat it once more. Make sure if you have not already done it, to schedule a date in your calendar to work through this process. And I promise you, I promise you, you will see results no matter what kind of results you will see a shift in your business if you do this thoughtfully and intentionally and once you do it I would love to hear how was the experience for you so share it with me on Instagram you will find me under the handle at Tandem Nomads there you can DM me or simply share on your own Instagram by tagging at Tandem Nomads And you made me a promise, Nomad Nation. Allow yourself to dream big. Don't limit yourself. You will have all the time and the resources and the process to then figure out how to make it happen. But first, allow yourself to dream big and allow yourself to turn all the challenges that might come into great opportunities. See you in the next episode.